Hello, welcome to the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast. My name is Julie, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Sweet Sparrow Knits, and you can find my hand dyed yarn at sweetsparrowyarns.etsy.com. Hello, <laughs> um, I am coming to you on a sunny, gorgeous morning, and I think it's going to be a pretty long episode. Um, because I have a lot to talk about. Well, I think I'm just gonna get started. Um, so first up, finished objects. I have one finished object and it's a big one. I finished my What the Fade shawl. It's enormous. I love it so much. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, this is a sample that I knit um, because I was doing a trunk show at Do You Knit uh, at the same time that Andrea Mowry was teaching a class. So, of course, I wanted to have a sample of her work um, all done in Sweet Sparrow yarns. Um, so the colors that I used in this were, I'm going to get a little closer, um, Pajama Day, Wrapped Up in Books, Dusty Rose, I'm actually going to show you it in the fade part because I think that's easier to understand than looking at it in the brioche. Okay, so from the bottom up, um, we've got Pajama Day, Wrapped Up in Books, Dusty Rose, Flora, Lumina, and Alma. <sighs> I'm very excited for the fall to wear this shawl because I think it's going to be really cozy and I can definitely imagine um, nights curled up on my couch with my knitting with this draped around my shoulders. And since I have gotten um, quite a few requests for it, there are kits um, using the exact same colors and bases that I used uh, in my shop. So I used um, I used my Gosling base for Pajama Day and Wrapped Up in Books. And I used my Sandpiper Singles base for Dusty Rose and Alma. And I used my Magpie base for Flora and Lumina, just to give it a little bit of... I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell on the camera, but there's a little bit of sparkle. <laughs> so that is my only finished object. But it's a biggie. <laughs> um, I knit that really fast because I wanted to have it for the show, um, but I'm really excited to knit another one. I enjoyed knitting it. It was a fun pattern once I kind of got the hang of the brioche. It was my first time doing brioche. I had done um, two color fisherman's rib before, which I found to be kind of a hassle um, with all the knitting one below, and it, that just was not for me, but I like brioche much better. I'm just going to have a little sip of coffee. I've never been a coffee drinker. Um, in fact, I've actively disliked coffee until Jacqueline introduced me to the Stoke Cold Brew. Um, you've probably seen Jacqueline talk about it on her Instagram before. It's so tasty. It's so good. Um, so I've been really enjoying that lately. So I'm having, well, I would say iced coffee, but I forgot to uh, refill my ice tray. So it is, in fact, just cold coffee. But it's very good. And I am having it with some cream and a swerve, which is a um, sugar substitute, basically. And it's so delicious. Works in progress. So one of my works in progress you have seen before. And that is... I'm all tangled up. That is the foxglove cardigan. So this isn't going to look like much right now. <laughs> um, I have the body of the cardigan ready and I have one sleeve completed and I have the second sleeve in progress. 
I'm really enjoying knitting on this. It's very, um, it's very simple at this point. Oh, that was Jacqueline texting me. Hey. Hey, Jacqueline. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying knitting this, and I am knitting it out of Rauma Phenol Garn, which I bought at Vogue Knitting Live with the help of lovely Ellie Skein Deer, and I'm loving working with this yarn. It's very... It's not scratchy, but it's toothy, and it feels like it's going to be extremely warm uh, in the winter, and I'm really looking forward to having this done and wearing it. So after I finish this second sleeve, then it will be time to attach everything together, and you can see, I think, that where these stitches are on holders, I think that's where my sleeves are going to go. on the sides here <laughs> where sleeves go um, and after I get those attached then I think I knit about 15 rounds I'm not sure I'll have to look at the pattern um, then I knit a few rounds um, in the sort of underarm area and coming into the yoke and then it's time for color work so I've been kind of debating how I wanted to handle the color work on this because um, I wasn't sure how I wanted to distribute my colors, but I think what I've decided on is that I'm going to do, um, I'll put in a little photo here so that this makes more sense, but I'm going to do the little roots of the flowers in this gold, and then the stems in this olive green, and the foxglove, I'm dropping everything the foxglove flowers themselves in this soft purple color and they're going to be on a background of this pale blue. So I think that's going to be super pretty. I cannot wait to get to the color work part. I'm really, um, I'm really feeling the desire to knit color work lately because there's so many gorgeous color work patterns out um, and I'm excited to kind of up my skill level. I've knit a color work baby sweater in the past but I haven't knit anything color work for an adult and um, I, I was perfectly satisfied with how the color came out on the uh, baby sweater. It was the, what is it called? The Sweet William, I think, by Anne Kingstone. It's a baby sweater with um, little rabbits around the top. It was really cute. And I knit that for um, a coworker's um, child when I was at my previous job. Um, so I'm very excited to get the hang of two-handed color work because if I remember correctly, I was just holding both of the colors in one hand and then um, just picking them up as I needed them and I'm excited to do two-handed color work because I think that will be a lot more efficient and um, I'm also curious as to how it will affect my color work knitting that I have switched from throwing to flicking. Um, I think it'll probably be more efficient because it's more similar oh, what am I doing? <laughs> it's more similar to um, how, uh, what am I trying to say here? I think the finger movements on both hands will be more similar than they would be if I was knitting continental with my left hand, if I was picking the yarn with my left hand and doing a complete throw with my right hand. I think it'll be more consistent when I'm doing at least sort of similar finger motions with both hands. My second work in progress, and actually my final work in progress for knitting anyway, um, for this week is the, I've had to look up the pronunciation of this several times and I'm still not certain that I'm going to pronounce it correctly. The Snoqualmie hat by Andrea Mowry. Here it is, just a little beginning. And this is my Phoebe base, which is a DK weight tweed base in the Butterbeer colorway. I had originally hoped to have this done um, to have as a sample at the trunk show at Do You Knit, but um, just didn't quite happen. <laughs> but that's all right. It's it's still something that I'm going to be really happy to have, and I haven't decided yet whether this is going to stay as a shop sample to bring to trunk shows or whether I'm going to wear it because 
it just looks so plump and squishy and um, the single color brioche section is really pretty and I love the diagonal hello <laughs> I love the diagonal rib section which I'm actually in the section that goes the opposite way with the diagonal rib um, I just really like how this is turning out and um, I think it'll be very cozy and I think I want to put um, either an alpaca pom-pom or just a very fluffy cream colored wool pom-pom on this and um, I think I say this every time I talk about alpaca pom-poms but I um, get my pom-poms from Toft Alpacas you can also get it through loveknitting.com and they are um, pom-poms made from the fur of alpacas who um, pass away naturally and this helps the farmers to kind of recoup some of the money that they've put into raising the alpacas so that's that's kind of the only fur pom-poms that I use um, I really need to feel like they're ethically sourced in order for me to feel comfortable wearing them on my body so that's just that's just my opinion everybody has their own views on on fur so um, that's how I feel about it. And next on the needles, there's a lot that I want to cast on. Uh, there's really a lot. Um, I have been in a very monogamously knitting mood lately. Um, I guess because you can really see a lot of progress quickly when you're only knitting on one project. I mean, especially like the What the Fade Shawl, that was great because I was seeing huge amounts of progress um, on a very consistent basis, which was very rewarding. So I really want to do a pair of Clark socks, um, sorry about that, uh, as many of you know, my first pair of Clark socks, I wasn't thrilled with the yarn I was knitting with as far as uh, using it for um, cabled and patterned socks, it was just a little bit too splitty, so um, I am planning on casting on another pair in my wrapped up in books colorway on my magpie base. I actually already have that balled up and ready to go. Um, so I'm very excited to knit on those and I'm sure you already know this but those are the Clark Socks by Jacqueline Salem. So one of the sweaters that I want to knit next I don't think will come as any surprise because it's uh, super popular right now and for good reason it's beautiful. So I think one of the next sweaters I would like to knit is the Sipola by Caitlin Hunter and at the moment um, I think I have my colorways figured out but of course that could always change before I actually cast on but I'm feeling good about this so I think I want to do the body of the sweater in espresso and these are both my yarns on my sandpiper base which is a merino uh, single which is one of the yarns recommended in the pattern I think Yes, superwash singles are suggested. Great! <laughs> um, so I think I want to do espresso for the main color, which is just a really deep, yummy brown. And then I want to do dusty rose for the contrast color. I think they'll look really pretty together, and I think that's a combination I'll wear a lot. Um, I feel quite comfortable in brown, and I've gotten... Um, on a little bit of a brown kick lately. I have yarn for a Ramona sweater in brown. Um, it's just something that I really see myself wearing a lot in the fall. Um, I also would like to knit the Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. Um, I got to see a sample in person at Do You Knit and it's so pretty. Um, and I think it's the kind of sweater that I would just want to curl up in. Um, and especially because I have gotten up the nerve to wear jeans. I know. Ah! <laughs> um, so I think that sweater with a cute cami and jeans um, would be a really cute fall outfit and just very easy, which is kind of what I require <laughs> for clothes. Um, I think because I worked in an office and, you know, I didn't have to wear a suit or anything, I certainly dressed pretty casually for an office. But um, 
I think I've kind of swung in the other direction now where I want things that are really easy to wear, um, outfits that are very easy to put together, just unfussy and comfortable and feminine. Uh, so um, I actually have dyed up rose cardigan kits um, uh, in four different color combinations. There's one that's green based, one that's blue and gray based, um, one that is pink and gray and cream based, and one that is um, mauves and lilacs. Uh, so I think I'm leaning toward doing my rose cardigan in the gray and blush um, combination because it'll go with everything that I wear. But I also really love the idea of a green one. I also am really looking forward to knitting some of Melody Hoffman's patterns. Um, she goes by B Mandarines, and I've been watching her back episodes. Um, I've had a little bit of time to catch up, which has been great. And consequently, I, I always love her patterns, but now I'm I'm borderline obsessed. <laughs> I really want to cast on all of her patterns, to be honest, but I think the two that are at the top of my list are the I Smell Snow Shawl, which would take two skeins of fingering weight, and I haven't, um, I haven't decided what colors I would want to use yet, but I'm thinking Pajama Day and maybe Morel, maybe, or Dusty Rose. I'm very consistent. <laughs> um, but I'm really, I'm really looking forward to casting that on, and then I also really want to cast on her Woodland Tales mitts. I think they're so pretty, and um, I could use some mittens that are not, uh, not giant and thrummed, which I do have a pair of thrummed mittens, but they're, they're not great. I want to knit myself new thrummed mittens for this year because, um, when I knit those, I didn't totally understand what makes for a warm thrummed mitten. And rather than using spinning fiber to make the thrums, I untwisted a bulky single ply yarn. But um, it was, I think it was a Lion brand yarn, and it had quite a long staple and it didn't have a lot of like puff factor to it. Uh, so it's not particularly windproof and it doesn't keep my hands super warm. So, uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to knitting myself some new thrummed mittens for this winter, but I also really would like uh, some mittens that are a little bit more suitable for um, late fall, early winter, and late winter, early spring. And I think the Woodland Tales mittens will be perfect for that. Um, and they are out of DK weight, and I'm thinking I might do those in Jon Snow, um, because it's you know, a gray speckled with black and brown with little pops of um, blue and orange through it that I think would give, um, it would show off the texture, but still have some interest color-wise, and it would, you know, go with everything because it has gray and black and brown. So, yeah, that's my plan. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Before I started recording, um, I posted one of those question thingies on Instagram and in my Instagram stories and I asked if anyone had anything they'd like me to answer while I was recording today. So I did get a couple questions. I got a question from Kim who is Jack Soki um, and she asks, are you planning to knit a Tecumseh sweater in your yarns? And if so, in what colorways? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> um, I love the look of the Tecumseh sweater. I think it's going to be um, the kind of sweater that you just reach for all the time in the fall just to throw on over anything. Um, I haven't thought too much yet about what colorways I want to do it in. I did a kit, a custom kit recently for a customer who um, requested the dock as the main color and then Yulia and Mushaboom as the contrast colors and that looked beautiful. Um, so I've thought about doing that and I've also thought about possibly doing the dock as um, the background color with Dusty Rose and Butterbeer as the contrasts. Um, so I'm not sure yet. I definitely am planning on knitting that sweater at some point, but I don't have it totally planned out yet. Um, and Cindy, who is Miss Cozy Nester, who, hi Cindy, um, she asks, 
do the kittykins ever get into your yarn? So for anyone who is a new viewer, the kittykins are my cats, Murphy and Coco. Um, Coco is a Siamese, he's over there, that's why I looked over there. Coco is a Siamese and Murphy is a snowshoe Siamese. And thankfully they don't really have any interest in my yarn. Um, my shop yarn stays in a glass front cabinet in my hallway. Um, and my personal yarn stash stays in a glass front cabinet in my living room uh, and on a bookshelf because I finally accepted that it couldn't all fit in the cabinet and in my storage ottoman and in the bench of my coat hutch. Ah, that's all of it. I promise. It's only in those four places. Anyway, <laughs> so the cats are not... Murphy's looking right at me. Hi, baby boy. You want to come over? Want to come over and talk about your lack of interest in my yarn? He's so not interested in it that he's not even interested in talking about it. So, yeah, they, they don't really care about my yarn, thankfully. Um, however, when I get however when I get a new shipment of yarn and it comes in a big cardboard box, that is a different story. Um, once the yarn is out of the box, there's no telling what could happen. They enjoy leaping in and out of the box. They enjoy springing out of the box and surprising each other. So that's what their interest is in yarn. And Mom of Peg says, do you think you will ever design patterns? Um, the short answer is no. Uh, there are so many amazing pattern designers out there. And it really is not something that I'm inclined toward. Um, as much as I admire people who do it, it's just not how my brain works. Um, the math aspect in particular is something that... Hey, Coco. He never shows up on the podcast. Hey, bum. This is little Coco. Hey, sweetum. How's that good boy? little bean. Yay, a Coco cameo. Such a sweet boy. Oh, I think he wants to just chill on my lap. Huh. I guess Coco's gonna hang out with us. I totally forgot what I was saying. I got so involved here. Oh, so um, the math aspect of writing patterns is something that I think would be very difficult for me. Um, I can do some math, but it's not my strong suit. It definitely is something I have to work really hard at, and um, I think I'm more comfortable kind of staying with what comes more naturally to me, which is dyeing. So. Um, nope, I don't see myself designing patterns. So I was going to do sewing next, but Coco just settled himself on my lap, so I think I'm going to switch to watching and listening, and then I'll do sewing after that when I can bring myself to disturb this little guy. So watching, as I mentioned, I have been watching back episodes of Melody, the Mandarines. Um, I am a supporter of hers on Patreon, so I have been going through and watching all of her um, back episodes, which has been so great, just so soothing and inspiring. Uh, I have, I think, about maybe eight or nine more of her videos left on her YouTube channel to watch and I almost don't want to watch them because I don't like the thought of not having any more to watch. Um, but to be honest I will probably watch them and then start again from the beginning <laughs> because I watched her um, earlier videos on YouTube uh, quite a while ago so I've, I'm hoping I've forgotten enough about them to start over. <laughs> I have also been watching um, all of the episodes and seasons of NCIS um, on Netflix. 
Um, not really too much to say about that. It's a crime show. Um, the characters are good. Uh, you feel like you get to know them. Um, yeah, overall, I think it's a it's a good show. It's not, you know, I don't find it deep and meaningful or anything, but um, but I enjoy it. And I am looking forward to watching Marcella because um, both. Karen Kilgariff on the My Favorite Murder podcast and Katie from the Inside Number 23 podcast have recommended that. And um, there's also supposed to be a lot of beautiful knitwear in that. It's a British procedural. I love a good British procedural. <laughs> so um, I'm really looking forward to watching that and I might start that later tonight. And then um, I've also been watching the new season of the show Harlots on Hulu, which is such a good show. I love a period drama. <laughs> um, the actress who played Sybil in Downton Abbey is one of the main characters in Harlots, and she is such a good actress. Um, she's playing an extremely different character than Sybil, and um, it's just really impressive to see how she can transform herself um, between two such different characters. Uh, I've also been watching um, Lindy Hop videos on YouTube. <laughs> so Lindy Hop is a type of swing dancing. Um, oh, sorry, Coco is using his tail to turn my show note pages. Lindy Hop is a type of swing dancing. Um, it's usually very energetic and fun and um, the music is really fun. It just makes me really happy to watch it. I would love to uh, take some Lindy Hop lessons at some point. I have been watching tutorials on YouTube too. Um, I would not say that dancing is something that comes naturally to me. Um, I, I used to take dance lessons when I was younger and then, like so many of us, I hit puberty and I got awkward. So I never really got that back. Um, but I think Lindy Hop would be a good option for me because you don't have to be like super, super graceful, which is good because I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's very like high energy, which is a little bit more my style of dancing. Um, in fact, I call my one dance move like the cheerleader because it's basically just me like bopping. That's, that's my move. That's what I do. All right. Where? What are you doing? I'm having cat turf wars over here. Coco is on the ottoman. Murphy wants the ottoman. There. Oh, everybody's on the ottoman. Let's see if there's room for everyone plus my tripod. Nope. Murphy is now gumming Coco. He can't really bite him because he only has like three tiny teeth. Um, so mostly he just gives Coco like wet cow licks of fur all over his body and Coco kind of looks at him like, all right, but, um, we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. Now that, um, now that Coco is off my lap, I can show you guys some sewing stuff. So this is a top that I made. This is the Peppermint Peplum Top um, from Peppermint Magazine. And it's just a very breezy um, tank top with a peplum. It has a lot of positive ease. Um, and now it's covered with cat hair because Coco sat on my lap. So um, with this top, um, there are some adjustments that I would make in the future, and I, I made it out of a rayon chalet, um, which was really nice to work with. I lengthened the bodice area by two inches, and I took in the sides um, one inch on each side for a total of four inches circumference. I think when I make this again, I will actually take it in another inch on each side because I still have a lot of positive ease. Um, here's where the top is. Here's where my body is. So I think 
I have probably two and a half to three inches each side um, of positive ease for a total of like 10 inches of positive ease, and that's a lot of positive ease. So I think I'll probably take it in another inch on each side the next time that I make it. And then um, the armholes also are quite low on this top. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's because when I did the bias binding, it stretched a little bit. Um, but I did stay stitch, so it shouldn't have stretched that much. But um, I think bringing that in will also help. And then I think I'm also going to true it up a little bit just to raise that armhole. Okay, I hope that didn't look too weird. I really don't know. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Let's get readjusted here. Hello. So I did a number of other modifications on this top as well. Um, like I mentioned, I did um, I did take it in on the sides and lengthen it by two inches in the bodice. So um, when you do the full bust adjustment, it also adds to your um, your front width um, because you're making up the basically you're you're pivoting that fullness. Um, into the front. So I did do waist darts just to add a little bit more shape to it and prevent it from getting too wide in the front. Um, but I think on my next one I will probably move the bust darts up about an inch um, based on where they're sitting now. I feel like they could be a little bit higher up. Um, I do plan on making more of these tops. It's very breezy and comfortable to wear in the summer, um, especially because it's been so warm lately. So um, I guess we can actually go ahead and talk about what fabrics I'm going to make them in. I went on a little bit of a fabric buying thing. Um, so I guess I should talk about for a minute why I'm suddenly feeling the urge to sew for myself. Um, I have lost almost 20 pounds in the past couple months. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say the past couple months. That really creates an unrealistic timeline. Um, since April, um, I have lost about 20 pounds. Um, so, yeah, I have been doing the ketogenic diet, which is a, um, high fat, low carb, diet. Um, part of why I'm doing it is for my thyroid. Um, I don't want to get too much into it because it's honestly like not that interesting and we all get bombarded with plenty of diet culture stuff as it is. So um, I am feeling more comfortable with my body than I have in quite some time. So uh, it feels like the right time to put some of my sewing skills to use and make some stuff to put on the bod, as my grandmother <laughs> would have said. She, um, she, <laughs> when she was getting dressed, she would say, ah, what will I put on this magnificent bod? <laughs> she was a pip. She was great. So here's what I am planning on using to make more of these tops. I'm also planning on making some Ogden camis, so um, some of these may end up going to that instead. I'm not sure. I just uh, really want to increase my wardrobe of easy throw-on summer tops that I can then layer with hand-knit cardigans um, in the fall and winter. So this is the first fabric and um, I have to look up her Instagram name. One of the ladies that I follow on Instagram who makes adorable clothing. Here we go. Meredith and she is Mare Berry on Instagram and she makes absolutely gorgeous clothing and gorgeous food and everything in her Instagram feed is beautiful. So she made a peppermint peplum top out of this fabric which is a cotton and steel strawberry print. Um, I think it's coming across a little bit more orange on the camera than it is in real life. Um, it's a very pretty sort of rusty color with um, pink and white strawberries. The strawberries are definitely coming across more vibrant than they really are. That's a little bit better in terms of color anyway. So this is so cute. 
and this I think will definitely be a peplum top because uh, Meredith looked so adorable in hers and I just want the exact same thing. This is a cotton and steel fabric. It has these gorgeous big yellow roses. I love that it has the bits of pink in some of the roses. I think it would be great in either, but since the print is so bold, I think maybe a more simple, less voluminous silhouette would be the way to go for this. So this might be an Ogden cami. Oh, I love this fabric. It is just these gorgeous botanical illustrations with little bits of script writing. Um, I really love this. I think this is going to be a peplum top because I want to show as much of this print as possible. So I think in that case, um, something voluminous is actually perfect because the colors aren't super bold, but um, there's a lot of print to show. This is a rayon chalet. And I just love this print. I think it's gorgeous. I think this might become an Ogden as well, just because it's so soft and fluttery. And um, I think it would work really well tucked into skirts or worn loose over jeans with a cardigan. So this might be an Ogden as well. And it has um, kind of an abstract pattern repeat, so I don't feel like you'd be losing anything by not seeing a ton of the pattern as far as fullness. So, super pretty. I love this. I still have more. I told you, it was out of control. There were, um, there were a few days where I really bought a lot of fabric. This cute little print, which I think is going to be a peplum top, and I think I'm going to be wearing this under my foxglove sweater because it has these sweet little houses and hearts and flowers on a gray speckly background. I think the colors in my foxglove will go beautifully with that. And then here it is with the body color. So I think that'll be a really simple, easy little outfit to wear in the fall. Oh, and I think that's going to be a peplum top. This acorn fabric. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this yet. It's really cute, but I'm afraid that in a peplum top, um, it might start to look a little bit babyish just because it has such a soft pink color with white accents and other pink accents. Um, I think this may become an Ogden cami, or it might go in my fabric stash until I know what I want to do with it. And lastly, well, lastly for tops, gorgeous wall fabric, which is the right side here. Here we go. So this is super light, super drapey, and it has these beautiful birds on it, and I love this owl. So I'm not sure yet what this will be. I'm leaning towards the peplum top because I think um, I think the large scale print would overwhelm the slimmer Ogden cami. So I think this will probably be a peplum top as well. Oh, just kidding, I have one more. Um, it's this girl with balloons. I just love it, it's so cute. So I'm not sure yet what this will be either. Um, I'm inclined to say peplum top, but I'm a little bit concerned that with the balloon print, um, a ruffly silhouette could start looking a little bit too childish or circusy. So I think I think this will be an Ogden cami, and then um, I will have extra left over because I bought three yards of this. So. Um, I would like to make myself a project bag out of this, too. Other sewing projects happening. So, I have a couple of muslins that are done. So, the first one is for the Alder shirt dress, which I think is by Grand Line Studios. I'll put it here. Um, so my muslin for this is not perfect because I did make a mistake in the collar. Um, I trimmed just a little bit too close to the seam um, and then when I tried to fix it, it just got worse. So <laughs> I did do one side of the collar correctly and I, it's, 
I did enough of it that I understand where I went wrong and I don't think I'll have any trouble doing this um, on the actual dress. So here it is. This probably is not going to look like anything but a mess of muslin on the video, <laughs> but um, it's a shirt dress that has a back yoke detail and it has a straight panel going down the front and then gathered side panels that go into the back. So I will put a photo of the Alder shirt dress um, over here so that you have an idea of what it looks like. Generally I'm very happy with how I think it's going to fit. Um, I'm considering doing a full bust adjustment on it. Um, I'm just not I'm not certain because um, my body is still changing and will be for quite a while based on um, how I've been, based on the, the diet I've been doing. And when I say diet, I really should say way of eating because I don't see it as like a diet. Um, it's something that I'm doing for my health because my thyroid got quite a bit worse. Um, unfortunately, since when I was first diagnosed with hypothyroidism, um, and rather than upping my medication every, you know, year or so, I would really like to, um, do everything that I can in terms of my, my habits to help it as well. So long story short, I'm not sure whether I want to do a full bust adjustment on this because it fits okay without a full bust adjustment. And um, I don't want to make a full bust adjustment and then end up with a lot of extra fabric in the bust, which is something that unfortunately I think will probably happen. Um, I don't want this to not fit me six months from now. So I might keep the bust as is and... Um, and have it be slightly less than ideal of a fit right off the bat and then um, have the fit kind of improve a little bit over time um, because I don't want to have something that I won't be able to wear in six months. So the fabrics that I have chosen for the Alder shirt dress are this cute little polka dotted cotton chambray which I think will be adorable in a shirt dress. And this really cute cotton, which has Lily of the Valley flowers. I really like how it's kind of selectively colored, so only some of them are white. And then kind of hidden amongst the flowers, there are little bees, like there's one right there. I just think it's so cute and I think it'll be a really cute shirt dress, um, particularly this one to wear in the fall with um, tights and hand knit socks and boots and a nice cozy sweater. And then my last sewing project that I wanted to show you is the Clio skirt by Made by Ray, R-A-E. Um, so this is my muslin. It's a really cute gathered skirt with an elastic back waistband. These cute little rounded pockets. And then on the muslin, I did do the option where you have a different color uh, hem band, although obviously mine is all the same color because it's all muslin colored. Um, and I really like the fit of the muslin. I made an actual skirt out of my, my real fabric. And it's this really cute forest print with little hedgehogs and trees and mushrooms and chipmunks. I love this fabric, it's so cute. So I'm slightly less happy with the fit of my real skirt. Um, I think that having the seam at the band here I think that helps give it some structure and helps the skirt to stick out more at the bottom, which what I wasn't as happy about with this skirt is that it has a lot of gathering up at the top and then I found that it was kind of just 
ballooning out and then going straight. There's no flare to this skirt. It's um, the pattern pieces are rectangular. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet how happy I am with this project. I added horse hair into the binding and that did help a lot. So, or into the hem rather. And that did help a lot with um, kind of holding it away from the body and not having it look quite so rounded at the top, which wasn't super flattering um, without that being balanced by more fullness at the bottom. So I haven't tried this on in probably a month since I made it um, and my body is continuing to change so I think I'm just going to keep trying this on because um, even though I may not be a hundred percent happy with it right now um, I, I am definitely open to seeing if that changes in the future so I'm definitely going to be holding on to this um, yeah. I'm going to actually go try this on right now. I'll be right back. I'm back. So I just tried it on. It's totally cute. I must have just been having a very uh, self-critical day when I finished this because it looks adorable and I'm thrilled. So yay. Can't wait to wear it. Maybe I'll wear this tomorrow. Um, I am going over to Jacqueline's house tomorrow and we're going to have a day of making and relaxing. Uh, so I think I will wear this to her place. And I think what I need to do is make a top that really goes well with this. Um, I think the Point Pleasant, no, that's not right. The Mount Pleasant top um, by Pip and Pin would be a really good option to go with that. So something cropped. Uh, that will show the waist um, and help give it a really feminine silhouette instead of um, having it go straight from bust to hip. I really want to make sure the waist shows. So yay, I'm a lot happier with that than I thought I was. So the other fabric that I have that I want to make a full skirt out of, I'm not sure if it's going to be this one or something with a zippered closure that has more of a flared skirt and less of a gathered skirt. So it's this cute little sheep fabric. Um, I offered bags in this in my shop in the blush colorway of the same print um, quite a while ago now, but um, I kept this dusty blue colorway for me. And I am possibly thinking of Rhinebeck skirt for this. So we'll see. I do have an acquisition that I want to share with you. So um, I'm sure that you saw on Instagram the whole tits out collective, um, what's the word, movement I guess, um, that was started by Countess Ablaze, uh, basically in response to women being undervalued um, in their work and um, you can, you can read all the backstory about that um, on Countess of Blaze's Instagram. So um, a lot of dyers put out colorways for that project. And when I saw this color from the Kitten Knits, I really wanted it <laughs> because it's called Kitty Titties. I couldn't resist. So. It's this really pretty pink with speckles of yellow and black and a little bit of green and some gold and deeper pink. Just very fun, a little bit outside my usual comfort zone, but um, I couldn't resist that name. And I think this will knit into really gorgeous socks that'll be a lot of fun to wear on those uh, gray days in the winter. Catherine also sent along a skein for you guys. so. This is her agate colorway, and I'm going to open a thread in the Ravelry group where you can enter to win this. It's super pretty, light blues, teals, um, some green, a little bit of gold, a little bit of this really pretty sort of dusty purple, really pretty. And um, Catherine K. 
came out to the trunk show at Do You Knit and it was so nice to meet you Catherine and um, Catherine wore a matching fade, a matching um, so faded sweater with her daughter and the two of them just looked adorable together. So speaking of the trunk show, uh, thank you so much to everyone who came out and said hello, everyone who wished me good luck. It really meant so much and it was such a pleasure to show at Do You Knit and um, I'm super excited to share that I will be back on Black Friday at Do You Knit for another trunk show. And of course meeting Andrea Mowry was amazing. She's so talented. Um, so that was very exciting. And what else? Last but not least, um, I do want to share with you guys that I will be introducing two new bases uh, into my shop for the fall. And they are both non-superwash. I'm going to have a non-superwash two-ply fingering weight and a non, and that's uh, merino, 100% merino, and a non-superwash 100% merino four-ply worsted weight. Um, I really wanted to have some non-superwash options because I know um, a lot of people prefer that for sweater knitting in particular, and especially with the popularity of color work right now, I want to have some options available for that. And um, it's also kind of selfish because I want some non-superwash yarn in my stash to knit fingering weight sweaters, or to knit, sorry, to knit color work sweaters out of. So um, yeah, I will be doing some more test dyeing on that um, this coming week and then hopefully in two or three weeks I will be able to offer that in the shop. And I think that's everything for today, which is probably good because I think this is going to be a really long episode as it is. Um, and I am looking forward to talking to you again soon. Bye! Um, as far as where I, uh, uh.